Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. I recently heard Alice in Chains for the very first time on this channel, and the reception of that from all of you was just enormous and outstanding. So we looked in the comments for your recommendations, and Sean French recommended Down in a Hole, and that was upvoted over 2,000 times by many of you. So that's what we're going to do today. This is the MTV Unplugged version, which makes me extra excited because I love it when we get to go back to those acoustic versions where I can hear even more vocal details. A little bit about this song. Jerry Cantrell wrote it, and he was actually hesitant to bring it to the band. It was about his then-girlfriend, and he felt like it might be a little bit too soft. Uh, good thing that he did bring it to the band, though, and they liked it because it did become one of their bigger hits. And uh, in particular, I think it's notable to understand that Lane Staley really gave Jerry Cantrell a lot of encouragement. So Lane Staley is going to be singing lead on this, I think, and Jerry Cantrell backing vocals. But I've read that essentially Jerry was a, a very shy person and Lane was the person that helped to boost him and said, no, 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 you have a wonderful voice. Let's sing together. I feel like that is such a a wonderful thing to do as a colleague, especially because the two voices together are so exquisite. So let's get to it. The, the way that these voices go together is really amazing and so in sync. I'm going to talk about it over and over, but even just the way they said down together, where they went through each transition of vowel uh, perfectly in sync was really fantastic. I love the balance between them as well. And I wanted to mention, uh, I believe I read somewhere in the prep, I think that Lane was feeling kind of sick before this performance. Um, it seems like he's a little uh, not really energetic in the mic, but on the other hand, uh, I love that he still is containing like such a wonderful line of energy through this. It really sounds like a tortured kind of energy, actually. So maybe, who knows, maybe he's channeling that feeling of sickness really well. <laughs> um, we're going to go back here. Boop. This guitar riff is super pretty. It was beautiful how I think uh, Lane cut off there and let Jerry continue the harmony uh, right over the top. Oh, I just, I really like how they harmonize. Mm. 
crazy. He's doing so little physically, but the sound that's coming out of him is, it's so pained. Like the, the, um, just that tiny bit of grit on down, uh, it sounds like ragged in some way. <sighs> Whoa. I do want to say we, I think we know that Lane Staley died not too long after this from a drug overdose. And I think there's something about this, maybe because I know that story, but I wonder if he's really channeling some of that emotion into this right now that he was down in a hole that he felt like he couldn't get out of. Uh, there's definitely a very strong emotional impact. Um, a lot of times doing things that involve hands or face that helps a singer to be really expressive and uh, you know when you're in a recording booth a lot of times i'll encourage singers to do this to find that but it seems like he goes really inwards for that kind of feeling and then just channels it out which is also a really good way to take those emotions and deliver them to an audience um, i just want to appreciate that one more time this is i love the break too ring on the sound. Look at me now, a man who won't let himself be. I, it just, they're so insightful. I feel that one of the biggest reasons people don't achieve their full potential is because they won't let themselves achieve their full potential. That It's really themselves that, that's getting in the way. Wow, I love the way that lyric encompasses that idea. And oh man, wow, if I go back to uh, just down in a hole and I don't know if I can be saved. Like, I know that this is about, uh, was written for Jerry's girlfriend, um, but at the same time, it can be apl applied to so many different circumstances, which is part of why I think it's really good songwriting, right? It could be, um, you know, down in a, a hole of drugs. It could be uh, down in a hole of depression where you feel like you can't dig your way out. Um, oh man, uh, this is a really good song. Okay, gotta go back a little bit and let it keep going. Whew. talk a little bit about how their harmonies function. A lot of times you hear them moving in thirds next to each other, but one of the reasons it is such beautiful uh, harmonization is because a lot of times you have one singer that comes in at one point and then another singer that joins and then they'll drop off and the, another singer keeps going. So there's a certain independence of each singer, but when they lock into harmony, they move so well together. It's a, it's a combination that I think is really, really fascinating. I just also love, um, I feel like it's a lot of sensitivity from Jerry in particular. 
uh, to balancing the lead. You know, he's never overtaking it. There's almost something more soothing uh, and introspective when he's singing. Whereas Lane, he comes from the introspective side, but then really channels it out a lot more. Um, let's go back again. Listen for like the, the thirds moving and then how they hand off to each other. Losing my soul. Oh, maybe a little earlier here. Down in a hole. Might have missed the early part. Losing my soul. Those are your thirds. Hand off and then merge. That's so cool. You almost hear like an extra overtone above that's really interesting on, on taste. Like he has like the octave right above just super extra ringing. He's got a lot of ringing on his voice. Uh, I think it's fascinating how he's adding that distortion and painful sounds in there. Just really cool to the point where on Eden, you almost lose the pitch entirely. It's like, it's very disturbed. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about what I, I sometimes am starting to come to understand as like a grunge styling of vocals, which is to generally have the mouth a lot more closed. Um, I, I think in a lot of ways for other styles of music, we would consider it having the mouth closed like this to be rather sloppy in diction. Uh, and a lot of times it means that there isn't as much color that a person can access because you just don't have as much mouth space that you're working with. Um, that doesn't mean you can't add distortion in different colors down here. But one of the things that I hear is uh, a lot of enunciation that's happening more in the back of the mouth. So you're still getting really clear words. So that's fantastic. Uh, and then on top of that, um, probably because the mouth is closed, often the soft palate will drop a little bit more and then you'll get more of a nasal sound mixed in there. And that to me is one of the defining characteristics of the tone quality that we hear in some of this grunge movement. And um, and I feel that it is very, um, it has a lot of strange vibrancy and that torturedness to it. Uh, it definitely has like a very specific sound that people know and love. So most of the time as a voice teacher, I would tell you, move your mouth more, open your mouth more. But if you're trying to copy grunge, don't do that. <laughs> okay, let's go back. Like his breath control. I will bring no more of my feelings beneath. Down in a hole. What is this? It sounds like a talk. Down in a hole. Friends don't let friends haircuts. I don't, I don't know. If you know what that's all about, I feel like that has a backstory behind it that would be very interesting. So let me know. Losing my soul Down in a hole Losing control Another thing that I really dig about his voice, 
I mentioned earlier this breath control. He's got good breath control. That's like not just control, it's efficiency in the sound. So it sounds like his vocal folds are coming really cleanly together. Of course, a distortion would be added on top of that. So the vocal folds are not the thing that's making the like uh, kind of crunchy sound, right? It's, um, it's going to be another uh, sort of constriction higher up in the vocal tract. So uh, where those vocal folds are coming together, it sounds like they're really um, cleanly coming together. You don't hear a lot of extra air escaping. And that often means that a person can continue singing for a much longer time. I think that he's got a really beautiful steadiness to the voice. And when the vibrato enters, it's very even as well and very, very little too. So that's a very nice breath efficiency. That's the way I put it. Okay, let's keep going. so haunting that section uh, like I've got I've got chills this uh, there's it's hard to explain exactly why that's haunting um, I think it has to do with sort of the flow in and out of these two voices the way that they're overlapping they had that independency here very clearly as well but the way it comes back together is, is just beautiful I want to go back and listen to it again When he goes up to Sands here, he does open his mouth more. I, I should mention, to follow up on that grunge having generally more closed mouth, usually when you go higher, you're still going to open up a lot more. People will sometimes say drop for the top. Um, it's just essential with what's happening uh, in your vocal tract. You need to open your mouth more to produce a better sound. Um, so you can see Jerry do this here. Maybe it's fine. You'll see the same thing with Eddie Vedder as well, um, where he uh, often closed or more closed mouth in the lower registers, and then when you go up, you see it open a lot more. fascinating to me. I could go back and listen to this over and over to hear how they have combined this independence but synergy from the harmonies. Um, it's, it's just interesting to hear how sometimes they'll bring in a harmony on this down in a whole part, but sometimes they leave it out entirely. Um, and there was a part right before as well where they were in a parallel octave just for a little moment and then I think Lane's voice took off higher for some a different idea, and Jerry's settled down lower. Like it's, it's almost like, uh, like counterpoint in the way that sometimes, uh, in uh, some of the, I would say like back if you think about box time, when they're writing harmonies, a lot of times it was more like they were writing two separate lines that just sometimes magically came together and harmonized, and it's such a fascinating. Um, a fascinating technique to hear in this kind of music. I want to go back and listen to it one more time. Whew. There it 
there's, oh, oh, great starting spot. That's the spot where it's a parallel octave. <laughs> feels almost hypnotizing the way it's written too. I think we've got maybe uh, three patterns. I think that the guitar is just going through over and over. So it just keeps repeating and repeating. There might be another one in there. Um, and then uh, you're only going through in this like main chorus, the down and a whole part. You just have uh, three notes that keep happening over and over, descending as well. Uh, it's uh, a fascinating way to capture that feeling of sort of spiraling downwards, I think. <sighs> oh man. He's such a good example of somebody that can support their voice really low in the body and with tons of efficiency and uh, and not have to like make all kinds of uh, crazy face shapes or you know veins popping out. You can do that and it can help, but you don't need to. You can make a fantastic sound with very little movement. Whoa, this song is really good. It still feels like it's settling in. Like, wow, that songwriting is amazing. The lyrics are deep and profound, but also accessible. They feel like they're so insightful about the human condition and human life and uh, relatable in tons of different ways. And then the way that they put that together with the music and this, uh, the melody, how that reflects it, and the harmonies too, and even the pattern in the guitar was fascinating, how it all came together and made it feel somewhat hypnotic. Wow, what a, what a masterpiece of songwriting. And then add to that, these brilliant harmonies and these two intervoices, uh, two intertwining voices, I really want to dig into more of their harmony and how they write it and understand more, you know, if that is like a counterpoint kind of idea. It definitely feels like something unique and delightful to me. Really just very uh, vocally delightful, like my, uh, my ears tingle with joy at hearing how they've composed these harmonies and how their voices blend together. Uh, I have to say, I was really touched by the pain in Lane's voice as well. And then interesting how sometimes Jerry's voice had a little more soothing nature to it, but could also be more pained. And knowing that Lane encouraged Jerry so much to sing, I think is a wonderful, um, it just shows a wonderful partnership there and support, which I really admire. Uh, Wow, thank you so much. Also, thank you to all of you that recommended this, gave it a thumbs up. This was such a great selection. Oh my, and the unplugged version too. I love this series, so just wow. Great, great, great selection. Thank you so much for this recommendation. 
please do continue to make recommendations down in the comments below. That's where we look for them the most. And yeah, go ahead and thumbs up any ones that you see that you'd like to see on the channel. And you can also come and find me here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. And you can find me on Patreon. And you can also find me at thecharismaticvoice.com where I teach courses about music and about singing. I hope to see you somewhere soon.